computer probably says this meeting is being recorded. Um, it did say that, right? Yes. Okay, good. <laughs> uh, I want to make sure, imagine it wasn't recording. Anyways, it'll also be available to you. So um, if you want it, of course, I'm going to be sending it around. Um, so feel free to also share it with anyone who you think would benefit from the from this workshop. Um, this is the first workshop where we are having, but uh, we hope that it's not the last. We would like to offer it twice in 2021. And then our goal is to have it quarterly in 2022. Um, so there is there will be a post event survey being sent out uh, tomorrow at some point. So we'd love for you to fill that out um, so that we can kind of see what resources you would love to have and how you thought this first workshop went. Um, this is being ran through Out Athletics. Out Athletics is a program in uh, the Out Foundation that um, kind of does these sort of fitness uh, resources. So that's the, kind of the reason why we have that Out Athletics logo thrown up there. Um, now I am going to talk about all the amazing presenters and friends of ours that we have um, for this workshop. I am going to have to close out really quick of this PowerPoint so that you can see all of their amazing bios. Uh, but these are our these are our friends. So I'm going to go over each of them briefly. Um, we have Tom Miazga, who um, let's see. Tommy Osga is currently a head site coach at uh, Ozuaki, right? Ozuaki. Ozaki, close, yeah. Ozaki, Ozaki uh, Aquatics and head coach of the Whitefish Bay High School team. Uh, he also coaches at his CrossFit gym, Adapt and Conquer CrossFit, where he recently began his own adaptive athlete program. Uh, Tom is also a Wheel Wad CrossFit Games champion for 2018, 2019, is also a Paralympian. Um, and yeah, he's just an amazing individual. So we love him. And um, he is mainly going to be leading this workshop. So I'll kind of be in the back end, uh, passing through the PowerPoints. Um, but feel free to reach out to Tom. We'd love for you to follow Tom as well as all of our other presenters on Instagram and their respective websites. So you can see all the great resources that they offer to the um, community. Uh, the next person we have is Marcia. Uh, Dr. Marcia Darbuzi, am I saying it right? Darbuz. Darbuz, okay, perfect. Um, Marcia uses she, they pronouns. I am going over the bio that we have here on Disabled Girls Who Lift. So um, Marcia is a Haitian American physical therapist, black creative spoonie and powerlifting strong woman battling autoimmune disease and chasing gains. Marcia was also, was always an athletic person from soccer in high school to flag football sports in college, but didn't begin her lifting journey until she picked up a barbell in 2010. Um, after her first comp in 2011, Marcia completed three to four times a year at a local national level meets. By 2016, Marcia found herself with a body that no longer listened or performed as expected. After two years of less than stellar and more than strange performances at Raw Nationals, Marcia shifted her focus to an equally demanding but more flexible sport of strong men. Career-wise, Marcia became a doctor of physical therapy in 2014, and today she is the owner of RZPT, the first woman-owned uh, Black physical therapy clinic in F South Florida. Marcia splits her time between her clinic, RZPT, in South Florida and her many passion projects, including Quad Squad, quad squad Shop and Disabled Girls Who Lift. Um, then we have um, Mary Beth. Uh, Mary Beth is a native to the, and Mary Beth uses she, her pronouns. Uh, Mary Beth is native to the Philippines and an immigrant to California. Mary Beth has since embraced her identity as a queer disabled woman of color, um, a sexual assault survivor, first generation college graduate, power lifter, and an avid member of the limb difference community. 27 years old, Mary Beth left the wine industry to pursue arts and entertainment at Cal Performances where she currently manages performance venues across the UC Berkeley campus and strives to provide better access to people with disabilities. Mary Beth has also been competing in powerlifting events for five years, having placed first in her weight class at USPA Nationals 2015, USAPL California State Championships 2017, as well as several other local meets and hopes to break current barriers that athletes with disabilities face in national sports federations. And then let's see who else we have. We have Alec. Alec is a CrossFit level three, very high up there. Um, uh, is a USM, 
uh, veteran and uh, who has founded and operated two successful CrossFit, affi CrossFit affiliates before creating and managing the adaptive training education program at CrossFit. He now serves on the CrossFit L1 seminar staff and coaches at CrossFit Invictus. Alex's main role um, is director of the Adaptive Training Academy, which provides adaptive and inclusive fitness training education courses and seminars. And his passion is serving the disabled veterans population by aiding them to get engaged in community supported fitness programs. And Alex has run an adaptive fitness program as part of Naval Medical Center San Diego's recreational therapy program since 2013. And he is also head strength and conditioning coach for San Diego State University's newly formed adaptive athletics program. And then finally, you have me. Um, I'm Eddie Plata, and I am the executive director at the Al Foundation. I've been here since 2017, uh, serving, formally serving uh, the LGBTQ plus community for over three years. I've also had the opportunity at working at another organization called MyFace, uh, serving the craniofacial community and many of those folks um, are living with disabilities. So we, I had the um, ability to work with that community as well through there. And so in total, I have about seven plus years of nonprofit experience. I love creating resources like this. So I hope that, you know, this is just one of the first workshops we get to have and we get to have many more. Um, so yeah, that's kind of all of us. Um, I'm gonna go back to the PowerPoint. So now I'm gonna to talk to you a little bit about the programs and services that we offer at the OUT Foundation. Uh, we have three programs, um, OUT Athlete, OUT Athletics, and OUT Health. The OUT Athlete program is a scholarship program for young adults, generally ages 18 to 26, who are looking for a local gym. Um, we mainly partner with CrossFit Functional Fitness Gyms um, to provide them one year access to the facility. Um, so they can get that one year gym membership, they get ongoing nutrition counseling from a local nutritionist um, to kind of check in with them semi monthly to see how things are going, seeing if they need to change their goals. Um, they're, they're also outfitted from head to toe from our new corporate sponsor Puma. Um, so shoes, t shirts, all the types of swag to make the athlete successful uh, in the gym. And then we also provide monthly zoom educational sessions, which I hope one of these sessions can be around uh, adaptive athletes but um, those sessions are all educational and folks get to learn um, about different topics. And then finally, they have their uh, WhatsApp social group where they all kind of get to communicate with each other and talk about PRs and other amazing things that they have going on in their lives. Um, that program is for a full year when the athletes are with us. And then after that, they're placed in an alumni group where they continue to stay connected. That's available really for anyone who's on this call. If you'd like to um, apply for it, it's opened up every October. We start accepting applications November folks, uh, or sorry, November is when the committee reviews the application. And then in December, um, we let everyone know who is accepted. And then in January, everyone starts. So January through December. Um, and yeah, we work with amazing CrossFit gyms uh, across the US that kind of provide that support to folks. Um, then we have Out Athletics, uh, which kind of is bringing this workshop, but their focus is on making inclusive um, gym spaces as well as in inclusive events at spaces where um, they might not have uh, like a strong LGBTQ plus community. Um, so that has been a, we haven't had too many events without athletics because of COVID. Uh, we've had to have, we've had to pivot um, to a lot of virtual stuff, but I definitely recommend you checking that out. That's our largest program and also a fundraiser for us. Uh, with that program, we're in 42 states and about six countries. Um, so really we go into a space where they might not have um, or where they have or don't have a huge LGBTQ plus community and we create a workout for them. We do a social uh, event usually after or before um, and then we just have a good time and then registration from that goes back into our programs. Um, and then another cool couple of cool things that are coming from Out Athletics. Uh, we have an inclusive gym finder where folks can go on and find an inclusive gym. Um, and affiliates and other gyms can get placed on there by filling out a self-report. So they'll send us things like their non-discrimination policy, their code of ethics, if they have inclusive markers within the gym. And we, we have a committee that reviews all that stuff. The committee is called the Fitness Inclusion Action Committee and they're currently working with CrossFit um, in order to create more inclusive spaces. Um, so yeah, that's really exciting stuff happening on the Out Athletics front. And then finally we have Out Health which is our uh, health medical part of the Out Foundation. 
uh, where we provide support services primarily to folks who are transgender, gender diverse, um, giving them access to primary care providers, really anything. People reach out to us, they're looking for a dentist, they're looking for a physical therapist, and we're able to find them a provider based on if they have insurance, if they don't have insurance, we can also kind of help folks navigate that. Um, but we do very niche workshops there. We have surgery education workshops. Uh, we had sex education workshops and all this other cool stuff. So those three programs are on our website for you to kind of check out. Um, and that program is also diving into mental health. So we do these uh, quarterly um, sessions called Chill Out, where we talk about mental health topics and wellness topics. So I'd love for you all to um, sign up for any of those things. Finally, one thing I wanted to mention, I'm sorry I'm talking so much, is we are going to be sending out a resource pack, a resource flyer for you all to kind of check out. Those resources are specific to the LGBTQ plus community, as well as for folks who are in the sort of adaptive community and looking for tools and resources um, and disabled girls who lift provided a lot of resources there. So we would love for you to check it out. And that's it. That's all I, that's all I have. Um, I'm going to pass it over to Tom. Thank you, Eddie. And good morning, good afternoon, good night, wherever you are. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, guys. Um, I'm Tom Yaska. I'm coming to you from Milwaukee, Wisconsin. It's a little bit north of Milwaukee, but born and raised in the area here. And uh, as Eddie so kindly introduced me already, I am uh, big in the CrossFit world now. I was a former Paralympic swimmer growing up. Swimming was kind of my niche as I found it. Uh, it was the one place where I felt like my disability was kind of rendered useless. And I kind of felt like a superhero in the water. I felt that weightlessness where I could do anything that all my friends could do. And so it, it was quickly a home for me that escalated all the way to the uh, Beijing Paralympic Games in 2008 and many other international meets. So very humbled to have those opportunities uh, and now be in the CrossFit world. I retired from swimming in 2015 and quickly found that the competitive lifestyle was not done uh, and found CrossFit originally for therapeutic reasons, uh, but quickly found that, you know, pull-ups are fun to add in there and some arm stuff is cool too. So it escalated into uh, being a part of the Wheelwad organization, which is, uh, if you think about Paralympics being the uh, disabled events for Olympic athletes, Wheelwad is very much the same for able-bodied CrossFit athletes. Uh, and so there are many different categories. I myself am a uh, seated athlete with more of a cerebral palsy, uh, specifically spastic diplegia. Uh, and so within my disability, I can get up, I can walk around. I'm probably 80, 20% of my day in the chair versus out. I don't use my chair in my house, um, but I use it around the pool deck. I use it while I'm coaching CrossFit, but I actually have the ability to get up and do full hang gymnastics movements. So our seated division actually is split into two categories. We have seated one and seated two. Um, for now, those that can get out of their chair and those that can't. Um, and so uh, I'm in that seated two category. And what should be really cool about today is that I can actually show you how I would um, adapt a CrossFit class for an adaptive athlete in the middle of an able-bodied class as well. So we can still achieve the same stimulus and make sure that everyone's getting the same kind of workout, even though we may do things totally differently. Um, and so I'm really looking forward to this. We're going to start with a little bit of a general warm-up um, and then go into our what we call fight gone bad style workout. Um, it should be a good little four round workout. Um, and I guess like, before we get started, it'd be kind of cool to know, um, do I have any seated athletes joining me today? Any wheelchair users joining us today? No. No, that's all right. That's okay. That's cool. I can do things out of my chair too, but it'll be kind of cool for you to see what I do as well, how I would adapt a movement, right? Like an air squat or um, high knees to make it adaptable for me so I get the same stimulus that my shoulders need to warm up and be ready to move. Um, but this will be a good one then. It's basically body weights, right? I don't know about you, but I've had plenty of Christmas cheer over the last few days, so I need to get moving. Um, I need to, need to shed a few pounds, but um, this should be good. You, if you have a dumbbell, great. Uh, or any odd object that you can use to lift overhead. Um, fantastic. If you don't, don't worry, we can always adapt that or modify that as well. So I don't want to wait any longer here. I hope other people are working out as well. We're going to get ourselves warmed up a little bit. We have four different movements we're going to warm up with, and we're just going to run through each of them for about 30 seconds on a continuous running clock. We'll just switch as we need to, just getting our body flowing, getting ourselves moving, okay? Um, the first one being is a world's greatest stretch, where as we do this, you're going to see this Simply lunge out in front, let yourself crouch over that front knee. You're going to push your elbow inside of your knee and give you a nice T-spine uh, twist here. So as a seated athlete, I can do this very similarly. I'm just obviously not going to lunge. 
I'm just going to be in my chair. I'm going to come inside my knee here, get a nice rotation, reach my hand opposite. And I can feel a really nice stretch to my opposite side obliques here. Okay. Just hold on to it for about a second or two, and then we'll end with the next forward, and we'll switch to the other side. That'll be our first movement there. Hang on one second. I'm just going to explain it for you guys, and then we'll get into it. Uh, our next one's going to be good mornings. So we're going to cross our hands on our shoulders here in a nice upright position. We're going to squeeze our shoulder blades back. We're going to hinge over at the hips, and we're just going to get a nice hip hinge warm up here, making sure we keep that tabletop like back, okay, as we do this motion. Again, easy one to do both seated and standing. Then we're going to go into a shoulder tap. All right, so we're going to get down into a plank position here. I've got an ab mat and a mat added in here, but all we're going to do in a nice tall plank position. We're just going to work on reaching our opposite hand to our opposite shoulder, just tapping, trying not to let ourselves roll or rock too much, keep those obliques engaged as we tap. Okay? Fun one just to let you know as I would do this for a seated athlete here, I would do a piston press where I would just take maybe very light dumbbell weights and just alternate pressing overhead to get the same stimulus, right? And the last one will be high knees. So just in place, getting the blood flowing, just driving those knees up as high as you can. Here, I'd be doing some arm circles, okay? I can go forwards and backwards, small ones, big ones, whatever you need. So we're gonna just run through that for about two minutes. We'll hit each exercise for 30 seconds at a time, just getting our bodies ready to warm up. Sound good? Cool. All right. So if you're ready to join me, let me get my, get my clock here. All right, so we're gonna start with that world's greatest stretch. And we're going to go in three, two, ready, let's go. Yeah, that's tight. I need that. We got a little music going on in the background to keep me sane. But if you want to mute yourself and play some music, make sure you keep yourself busy, keep yourself flowing today. Good, about five more seconds. Three. Two, one, and nice. Let's go ahead and go to those good mornings. Cross those hands, shoulders back, hinging at the hips, going as close to a 90 degree with the hips as you can. Right? If you can get a glass of water on your back and not lose it, then you're in a good position there. Awesome. Good job. So five more seconds again. Feel that through your glutes, through your hamstrings a little bit as you get nice and low down there. And good, let's go ahead and go to those shoulder taps. Give me a nice tall plank position if you need to go on your knees, that works as well. I'm gonna go ahead and do these piston presses for you. All right, but again, you're just tapping the opposite hand, opposite shoulder, okay? Keep those obliques engaged. Here we go. Here we go. Good steady rhythm, try and keep it from rocking too much. Good job guys, about five more seconds. And good, going to high knees for me here. High knees, get, those, get that blood really flowing here. All right, right in place there. Go nice and steady, get a little hustle like Eddie's going on there, perfect. Awesome, good job. Go backwards, push up a little bit. Good, about 10 more seconds. Keep it going, keep it going. Good job, there you go. Three, two, one, and rest. Woo, all right. Good job, hopefully that blood's pumping a little bit. Got a little heart rate. Fantastic, all right, friends. Oh, we got a visitor. Anna's brought her cat, love it. <laughs> we got a partner wad today, I guess. All right, so my friends, I am a huge proponent for CrossFit, um, largely because when we think about functional fitness, it really is functional, right? Um, it's so cool that I came from a sport where it was very specific, right? You had to have this certain set of skills, be able to swim in your certain disability class, be able to do certain strokes. And within CrossFit, there is just a, a plethora of opportunity and the way that you can adapt movements or scale movements as needed to make it work for anybody is just so tremendous. And it was so enamoring to me when I first started because I felt like I had another home where I could be myself, I wouldn't have judgment and I could just kind of go at it and see what happens. And I'm so glad I did because I love where I'm at and life's great. So um, 
Today, we're gonna to take a traditional CrossFit style workout called Fight Gone Bad. This is a workout where we do five different movements and you would do each of them as many times as you possibly can in a one minute span. So we would do one minute of one movement and then we go right into the next movement for another minute and then so forth. And you would typically do this for a certain number of rounds. People do it all over the place. Some do five rounds, some do two rounds, right? Today, we're gonna to go four rounds and we have four different movements we're gonna use and I'm using four traditional CrossFit movements, all right? Functional fitness movements here. So we're gonna go with air squats, sit-ups, a dumbbell snatch, and some push-ups, all right? There's a magical fifth rep right here. That's gonna be a rest minute. We're gonna incorporate a rest minute as well. So we're gonna start with a minute of air squats and we're gonna try and do as many air squats as we can in a minute. Then we'll go directly into sit-ups for a minute, directly into dumbbell snatch, directly into push-ups, and then a rest. So we have basically five movements, including the rest there, right? That we're gonna do four times through. And now the goal with this workout is if you think about CrossFit, we're thinking about high function, uh, high intensity, functional fitness, constantly varied, right? We want that high intensity piece. So we're trying to get as many reps as we can and really rip for that one minute that we're moving. All right. This is a great workout too, because it's relative to you. Some people may get 30 and that's a really good score for them. And some may get seven and that's a really good score for them. But no matter what, you're channeling into what your body needs and what your intensity level requires. So this is really cool. Um, I'm going to show you a couple ways that we could adapt this as well, right, to get to our seated athletes. I'm not quite a great proponent of air squats. They're coming together, but not all the way there yet, right? Um, and some, some uh, seated athletes, like I said, are um, stuck or confined to their chair, right? So certain movements like push-ups are a lot more difficult for them to get in and out of, where that transfer from the floor to their chair would almost take the whole minute, right? And it would kind of render the workout useless. So it would be more important to find a adaptive movement, right, that we could do to accommodate them while they can stay in their chair and really get the same benefit that anybody else would. So without further ado, air squats, right? The L1 in me is gonna tell you that we need to look for that 90 degree knee bend at the bottom, right? Trying to stay back on those heels, shoulders up, neutral spine. And as we squat down, we're letting our hips open up, trying to push our butt back and down. Katie, that is awesome, I love it. Very nice, it was a good rep there. All right, looking to get to that 90 degree position, okay? As best as you can. If we're not quite there yet, that's okay. That's something that we're going to work on throughout our rounds. So you might find that as we warm up and get moving, you actually get a little bit easier to get down into that depth. Okay. For me, a good way to accommodate a air squat would be a dumbbell curl. Okay. So for me, I have two dumbbells here, so I could go both at the same time. I could alternate one at a time, right? This is another way to keep things moving really well. Um, other good ways for a seated athlete to do an air squat would be doing dips, like across a bench. Um, we could you could, if it weren't in the work already, do push-ups instead as well, right? Something that's functional and constant moving like the shoulders would, right? It's very similar. The next movement is going to be a sit-up, all right? So I got myself an ab mat. If you have one or a mat you can use to help keep yourself from getting any raspberries today, all right? I'm going to finish out my chair pretty quick. Grab our mat here. If you can, you can go in a nice straight-legged position here. We're going to reach back behind our head. Sit up and touch all up to our toes. If you don't quite have that flexibility yet, you can bring your toes into more of a cross-legged style here, right? And try to bring your hands in between. Again, shortens that range of motion a little bit, but still gets all the same level of activation. All right? A fun one with this is oftentimes you'll see a seated athlete do a Russian twist. And you can use a dumbbell or I grab a, a wall ball here. All right? It's a 14-pound wall ball. Again, another great way for a seated athlete to get the same kind of stimuli, just rotating from wheel to wheel. Again, looking for more than just the arms moving, but the whole torso to rotate together. All right? Making sure everything's moving. Again, another way could be using a dumbbell, right? I could go with a goblet style hold. I could go hold both dumbbells at the same end. I'm just get a simple twist here or go from spoke to spoke, as we call it, right? But again, a great way to keep your body moving. Oh, I need that anyway. Then next one's going to be a dumbbell snatch. So if you have a dumbbell or an odd object you can use, like a water bottle or even like a backpack, or if you have a kettlebell at home, this is a great movement that anybody can do, seated or standing. So if you're in a standing position, I'm going to have you tap the ground every single rep. As a seated athlete, I'm going to go from my hips to overhead. So we're going to alternate, and we're going to take the dumbbell with our hands, with our knuckles towards our belly. We're going to raise our elbow and really shrug up nice and high. We're going to snap that dumbbell to a locked overhead position. Okay. Notice that my arm and my, my shoulder and my elbow, my wrist, they all make one nice solid straight line. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to transfer 
that weight underneath my chin, my other hand, tap on my hips there, and pull up once again. So I'm gonna do this alternating one rep every single time for a minute, okay? Yep, and my standing athletes, you're gonna go from the ground like Eddie's ready to do there, love it. Very cool. All right, and the last one being push-ups, okay? So, plenty of ways to scale a push-up to start, right? You can go on your toes, you can go down to your knees if you need to, you can do hand release push-ups if you're feeling that. If you're feeling like you wanna go RX plus today, you need a little extra tricep, you can go into a diamond position if you need it, you can go wide grip. For a seated athlete here, a push-up, a great way to modify this, or excuse me, adapt this one, would be just doing a simple push press with those dumbbells again. Like I did those piston press and warm up here, Another simple way that, again, if it takes me 45 seconds to get on my chair, it's not going to be worth it for me to do that in this workout. So doing a push press here would be a very same stimuli for any athlete doing a push up. All right. And then, like I said, that fifth minute we have will be a rest minute. So we can regroup and try and get the same number or better every round. All right. So it's going to take us a total of about, what, 16, no, 19 minutes. All right. To do this whole workout. So, if you're ready, I'm ready. Any questions about anything? Karina's ready. Let's go. Mm, let's do it. Can you raise your volume so we can hear? Some was of I too quiet? I'm sorry. Yeah. No, 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 not yours. The music. Oh, raise the volume. Oh, absolutely. You know it. I'm. Uh, I will take this to my grave. I've been told by many clientele at our at our place that I play the best music. So, okay. uh, I own it. Um. Oh, I left the iPad over there. Perfect. All right. I'll be helping you out with our minutes as well. I got my uh, pace clock behind me. You can't see it, but I'll help you out with it. I'll yell out when it's our minute time to switch. All right. And when we're resting. So if you want to get yourselves ready, find some space. We're starting with those air squats. All right. All right, we've got about 15 seconds till we start here, guys. Again, get after it. We want to get as many reps as we can in a one minute span. All right, 10 seconds here. Here we go. In three, two, ready, let's go. There you go. Find a good rhythm. Let's get a sweat on today. Let's do it. Oh, we got everybody going. I like this. I know I can't see a lot of faces, but I'm going to trust you're working out. If you have questions, you let us know. Good. We're 30 seconds in, halfway. Keep it moving. Good job. Good job. Oh, now we're bumping. Let's go. Good. 20 more seconds. All right, we got 10 seconds. We're going to do our sit-ups next. Okay, so you ready to move? You ready to switch? In three, two, ready, sit up. Here we go, here we go. Good job, good job. Good 
Nice work, nice work. Make sure you're hinging over like we did our good mornings when you're tapping the ground with that dumbbell. Good job. We're over halfway. Good job. Keep it up. Keep it up. Oh, there comes the slush. I'm starting to feel it now. Good job, you guys. Awesome, awesome. 15 seconds to go. Ten. We got push-ups to finish it up. Push-ups. Three, two, one. Push-ups. Here we go. movement or better right good efforts guys we're moving we're grooving we got about 30 seconds back to those air squats to start Whew. all right 15 seconds guys good job good job All right, five, round two in three, two, ready, let's go, air squats, here we go. Nice, good form there. Nice job, Katie, love it. There you go, Anna, keep it moving. Good job, Eddie. Jesse and Leah and Jack and Nick, I'm sure you guys are getting at it. Keep it up, keep it up. Come on, we're halfway through this minute here. Good job. Ooh, that's a good pump. That's a good pump, keep it up, come on, 15 seconds. Good job, keep it moving, there you go. Nice. And I can tell you using a box or a bed in it, that's a perfect idea to help stabilize yourself. Good job. Come on, five, four, three, two, one, sit up. Here we go. Good job. 
Awesome, you guys. Love it. Keep moving here. Keep it up, keep it up. We are halfway. Awesome. Love it, y'all. Keep it up. Come on now. Ten seconds. Come on, fight for more. Fight for some more. Five, three, two, ready. Push ups. There you go. Push ups. Get my push press here. Show how you adapt a little bit here. Ooh, that's a good pump, I brought that dumbbell snatch. Whoa. Good job. Keep moving, guys. Remember, small breaks. Three, two, one. Shake it up and go. There you go. Good job. Come on, keep it going. Awesome. We got 20 seconds to go. Good job. Keep moving. There you go, Katie. Love it. Love that effort. 15 seconds. Come on. Nobody stops moving now. Here we go. Stay in it. Stay in it. Five, four, three, two, one, rest. Woo! Good job, you guys. I'm shiny, I promise. You can see it on there. It's in there. <laughs> awesome. All right, now, in any workout, round three and four is going to be the hardest. It's that one we got to be mentally strong and say, I know my body's telling me that I can do this, but my mind's not. We gotta change that thinking and know that we gotta push through. You wanna get better, you gotta get uncomfortable. All right, and that's just how it goes. So embrace that discomfort and know that this is what's making you better today. All right, we got 20 seconds. All right, 10. Back to our air squats, starting those air squats. In five, three, two, ready, let's go. There you go, guys. Good job. All right, all right, nice job, keep moving. 30 seconds in, hopefully you're right on pace, if not ahead of it, let's go. Come on, be the best you right now, here we go. 20. Good, come on now, 10 more seconds. Four, three, two, one, sit up, sit up, sit up. Oh guys, it's a 
Awesome. Good form, good positioning. Nice job, nice job. Come on, we got 35, uh, 25 seconds. Keep those obliques tight on the opposite side as you press. Use those opposite obliques. There you go. Come on, 10 seconds. Woo. There we go. Five, three, two, one. Push offs. Here we go. chance, right? Little rate break. All right. We got 10 seconds here, guys. Come on. We can all do this. I know we can. Here we go. In five, three, two, ready? Here's squat. Let's get it. Come on. Last round. Good job, good job. Come on now. Good, halfway through. Keep it up, keep it up. There you go. Come on, keep it up, keep it up. You can tell me when you got games for Christmas. There you go. Let's go. Come on, 10 more seconds. That was super lame. <laughs> In five, four, three, two, sit up. Here we go. Sit up.
can do thrusts, so we're a sucker for pain. Let's keep going. Come on. There you go. 30 seconds. Big exhale as you press. Big exhale as you press. Good job. There you go, Eddie. Good. Come on now. Come on. 15 seconds. Come on. Let me rep count right now. Let's go, come on, five, four, three, two, one, last minute, here we go, push-ups. I know it's gonna hurt, but we got this, come on. Fight that discomfort here. Holy cow. Who says you need weight to get fit? Holy man, that was awesome. Good job, you guys. Super, super good work. I appreciate you guys all joining me today. I'm glad I got a little sweat myself. I wasn't sure if I was gonna work out, but I'm ready to go now. That's awesome. Oh. So, typically after a class like that, it would take a few minutes just to stretch out, make sure your body's feeling loose and limber, right? Make sure you're hydrating. Always, always, always try and get a little bit of protein, right? Help those muscles recover right away. And just a small amount of carbs will help kind of replenish the system a little bit, get you firing through whatever's coming next in your day. So if you're working out early in the day and you got a whole big work day ahead of you yet, get plenty of carbs, right? Keep you moving for not falling asleep at the desk, all right? But awesome. Thank you so much. Um, without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to my man, Mr. Alec Zirkenbach. Again, you heard his, his uh, criteria and it's, well, Puts us all to shame, basically, I'll say that. But he's got a lot of great info for you about Wheel a lot about Adaptive Training Academy uh, and everything we can do to help you guys get involved and get started and maybe a potential CrossFit future for you. So, Mr. Alec, when you are ready, sir. All right. Thank you, Tom. Appreciate that. Um, so, guys, uh, Adaptive Training Academy was created um, back in uh, 2017 after CrossFit had asked uh, our gyms or my gym to create uh, a course in. Um, teaching other trainers and gyms how to work with uh, people with different and varying abilities. And so we created initially a course for CrossFit specifically. And then um, last year, CrossFit let all of their specialty courses um, separate so they could be independent. And that's when we became officially Adaptive Training Academy. Um, myself, I'm an adaptive athlete. I had an injury while in the Navy. Um, and then my other uh, main founders, um, you guys may know them, Kevin Ogar, Chris Stoutenberg, and Logan Aldridge. Um, they were the initial founders to help us create that education. And now we've expanded and, and added all kinds of subject matter experts. Um, we really rely on the community for support and bringing in education like Tom. And um, it's great to see Anna here too. Um, she's also taken our course. So uh, we mainly do this uh, through uh, seminars, education through a seminar. You can get a certification in adaptive and inclusive training. Um, we do live seminars, but this year we have had to switch to an online format, <laughs> uh, but it's still a great course. Um, just a little self plug. The next one is going to be starting here in January. It's an online cohort. So four weeks you get to go through with people and, and learn, you do your online course, then we get together every Thursday and discuss topics. So if you know of a, a coach or a trainer or a gym owner that would benefit from learning to be inclusive and essentially being able to work with whoever comes in their door. Um, that's what we're here for. So, but besides just the education part, uh, as far as the formality of the course, we're always here to help support uh, the community at large. So 
whatever you guys need specifically, if you have questions, if you want to find somebody in a specialty, um, whether that be like a doctor, physio, or a trainer that works specifically with certain athletes, please let us know. We can help you connect. Um, we're also the team that's going to be bringing the adaptive division to the CrossFit Games this year. So this will be the first year where the CrossFit Games has a, a true adaptive division. Since 2013, um, our team, mainly through Chris Stoutenberg and Wheelwad, have adapted the Open, and it's been like a, a parallel competition, um, sort of to what you could have done through um, throughout and, and uh, selecting um, specific hashtags to pair up with a group and see who else is competing. Uh, but this year is going to be an official, uh, there's official adapted division. So if you know of um, people that could register or would want to register, please encourage them to do so. Um, we want to grow this as much as possible, and we want to be able to have an actual competition in the, in the CrossFit Games as well, so at, at Madison where they're having it, uh, but the only way we can do that is to show CrossFit we have substantial amount of registrations and numbers, so it really relies on the community to get the word out, like, hey, there's a division just for adaptive athletes, um, go register, even if you don't think you're competitive, it's not about being competitive or going to the CrossFit Games, it's just about, you know, having fun in your gym or your community or linking up with other like people in the community and, and uh, being a part of it. But that'll really help us propel, um, you know, competition later on and have a platform for adaptive athletes to be able to express their fitness and show off. So, um, but yeah, please let me know if you guys want to reach out to me. Um, I, I think uh, Eddie, you can probably pass along our contact info and everything, uh, but we'd love to help support um, you guys, your gym, whatever you need, um, reach out for sure. Thanks, Alan. That was awesome. Oh, sorry. I'll just go ahead, pass it over then to our uh, wellness and support team. We got Mary Beth and Marcia here to help us out and explain this next piece. Hi, everyone. Well, I want to thank uh, Tom and Eddie for putting on this amazing workshop and workout and including um, organizations like myself, like uh, Disabled Girls Who Lift, uh, Marcy and myself, and, um, you know, having Adaptive Training Academy out here as well. We all know the importance of these types of communities, both uh, the disability adaptive community and the queer community and putting these together is an absolute dream. So everything that you're doing at Out Athletics, I have been a fan of for such a long time. Um, Marcy and I have been working together for the last few years now. The Disabled Girls Who Lift community started in 2017 solely as an online community for um, things like this, adaptive workouts, adaptive tools that we can share um, with people. Um, I myself have an upper limb difference. Um, seated athletes like, um, seated athletes, people who have chronic illnesses um, that identify themselves as Spoonies. Um, creating that kind of community had been absolutely important both in the gym and fitness world and in um, sports and federations like powerlifting and strongman. It was unheard of. Um, still currently there aren't very many, um, you know, there aren't very many, um, sorry, divisions, adaptive divisions that allow us to participate. So I've been um, participating in open powerlifting divisions for such a long time. And I wanted to show you all the tools I was using for today's workouts. Um, without a left hand, I've been using this Harbinger, let's see, this Harbinger hook to either hold a barbell or a dumbbell like this. And things that I use in training are also are very similar to this. Um, and a lot of the ad adaptive tools that we share on that community and resource pages. Um, but yeah, it's been absolutely important to have communities like this, share public conversation and really just be visible in the sports world. 
Um, so through the community, through our podcast that we started a year ago, um, I've been absolutely, you know, honored to share stories um, with other members in our community, like Marcia. Yeah, and I think one of the biggest things that we like if there was a, a you know elevator pitch what am I going to tell you about our podcast what am I going to tell you about this community number one we exist and we can thrive and number two we can learn to take ownership of our own bodies because too often people tell us disabled's a bad word too often people tell us just stay home it no we're not here for that we can be the experts of our own bodies we can figure out what tools work for us we can understand how to take advice from, let's say even ATA. Okay, how does that work for me? Cool. Even Tom, how does that work for me? Cool. That didn't work. All right, great. Like we can do these things for ourselves. And that's really like the main idea of Disabled Girls Who Lift. And I can't wait to see what else this type of event grows into. And I would love to see all sorts of movement you know, like Mary Beth and I don't do CrossFit, we're powerlifters, we stay in one spot. <laughs> um, so I'm sure there's a, a ton, tons of different uh, needs athletic wise, but I think the main idea is always the same, it's the community. So I don't care that this is a CrossFit workout, I'm here for it. Like we're here, we thrive, we adapt, and we keep it moving. I think the biggest thing is that as long as you understand that, like you'll, you'll figure it out, the rest will come. Just understand that you can take ownership of your own body, you figure out what works for you and don't let anybody tell you that you're not worthy of taking up the space. Take up whatever space you want. Exactly. And then um, I, in our in the bio that um, y'all read, it was it's absolutely important for us to find inclusivity, access and equity in all spaces, all environments, including where you work, uh, the, the teams that you're a part of um, when it comes to sports, sports federations, gyms that you go to. So hearing that we have an inclusive gym finder through Out, at, out Athletics and the Out um, you know, Foundation has been, you know, th these are the types of tools that we need um, in order to feel safe in these types of spaces. Uh, because people with disabilities as well as uh, the queer community have a lot of things in common. So when we have these conversations together uh, to try and, you know, to try and support each other through um, finding the best elevators and bathrooms, <laughs> um, that's absolutely important. <laughs> um, so we shared, uh, a few pages of resources that we're gonna we're gonna have sent out to you right after this workshop. Um, so I wanted to just name a few um, since we let's see. I had already talked about lifting hooks that we use as gripping aids, um, specific, specifically people with um, upper limb differences. I you know mine ends at the wrist. So this one's definitely a lot more helpful for me, but those of you who have um, adaptive athletes in your gym, or if you're an adaptive athlete yourself and have um, upper limb differences that are above the elbow, um, at the shoulder, uh, you'll see that in our community, there are just a, a bunch of um, tools that people create from home. So using much longer straps, than these using chains even to be able to lift the barbell overhead. Um, just take keep an eye out for those. But I know that, um, uh, let's see, Active Hands um, is a really great website and tool um, that provides tools that have been created for workouts like that. Um, I've seen adaptive jump ropes, so split ropes as well for seated athletes. Um, that don't have the actual rope attached, but are weighted. Um, and tons of support and advocacy groups as well that we've listed. Um, if the work environment that you are a part of, the gym that you are not a part of, um, you find discrimination in those, those places. We definitely have community and support groups for people with disabilities um, and some queer, queer groups as well. 
Yeah, so keep in mind, we're just sending you like a quick and dirty resource list. And if you have questions specific to your disability or things you're trying to figure out, you know, our doors always open. You could DM us on Instagram, email us, check out our website. We have more lists and resources and community. Everybody on here, I'm sure um, that's a part of this event is open to anything you need. That's, that's what this is really about is community and coming together and figuring it out. Um, and I think that that's pretty much it for what, what we wanted to say for this portion. Hopefully, hopefully it all makes sense to you guys. Awesome. Well, thank you ladies. I appreciate all that. That's a lot of great insight and even hearing some of the resources I hadn't heard of myself. Um, really quick as a quick testimony to all of this and the CrossFit lifestyle and um, I literally Googled like workouts for people in wheelchairs back in 2017 and found wheel wad. It was one of those things where it was kind of a stroke of luck. I wasn't really into the scene yet. I mean, I, that's kind of the same way I actually found Paralympic swimming was um, my swim coach is actually watching the movie, Remember the Titans. And there's a point, spoiler alert, where the star quarterback gets hit in the car accident and he becomes paralyzed waist down. And in the movie he says, don't worry, I found out there's actually sports for people in wheelchairs. And that literally provoked my swim coach to go and Google sports for people's in wheelchairs. And we found the Paralympic system. Uh, and I did very, very much the same thing with CrossFit when I first got involved. I'm like, I wonder if there's CrossFit for people in wheelchairs. Uh, and so I did the open in 2017, the first time around with absolutely no expectation. It was a really, really great way for me to set a benchmark for myself, figure out what I could do right now, what I needed to work on. Um, and much like the open for most every, like, you know, 99.9% .9 of able-bodied athletes, it's just a test of fitness for themselves. It's not about making the gains. It's not about trying to compete at the highest level and be Matt Fraser or Tia Toomey. It's about seeing if you've improved over the year and if you've found that you've gotten stronger. Um, and it's just a great wholesome community feel because you get usually the, your gym will do it as a Friday night lights kind of event or you'll often partner up with some people and do it at the same time and just build this whole sense of community that, um, is really inspiring and motivating for anybody and everybody. So um, that's a little vouch. And uh, uh, with Wheelwatt itself and the adaptive program that they are, um, just an incredible, incredible foundation they have laid for adaptive athletics in general. I know it's CrossFit driven, but um, I think about the strength that I've gained. And if I were to probably jump back in the pool today, I think I might be able to be better than I was before because the amount of core strength I've gained and all this different abilities with my bodies that I've learned through just different movements that I had never even experienced prior uh, has been incredible. Um, and, you know, between working out as a seated athlete or being able to stand and work out with standing upper athletes like uh, Logan Aldridge, who has one arm, or working out with Alec, who's a standing lower individual, you know, being able to push yourselves against somebody that has of like nature is just so cool. Um, I remember when I was swimming, I remember the first time I walked on deck and saw somebody that walked like me. It, was, it wasn't until I was 14 that I saw somebody that walked the same way I do. And I was totally dumbfounded. I was like, I thought I was the only one. And, and to be able to go to wheel wide and feel that same experience again, and be like, I thought I was the only person in a wheelchair working out. Like, that's so cool. Um, it's just been a really humbling experience. And there are so many people founding and helping out with wheel wide as well. Um, like Mary Beth mentioned, the split ropes, which I have brought some right here. These bad boys are actually just do simple jump ropes the same way like this. Um, these are made by Mute Sports, but we often distribute through Equip products. Um, Equip, Dana and Mark um, have been just an absolute stronghold in the Wheel Wad Foundation. Um, just how Dave Castro brings out some crazy movement or, or thing to move for the able-bodied athletes in the games, they do the same thing. They're making crazy things for Chris and Alec and Kevin and putting things together, but they're making lap mats. They're making wider base ski ergs and better uh, hooks for one-arm athletes for rowers. So if you need anything for your abilities, Equip Products is my vouch. I'm gonna vouch for them through and through. They do a fantastic job with everything that they've created. So um, that's just my little two cents. Thanks for, let me see the show there for a second, Eddie. But um, I know we have a few Q&A and we got, got some time. So if any of our um, guests joining us today wanna ask us some questions about anything CrossFit, LGBTQ related, we are we are all yours. So I do have some questions that um, some folks sent in. Okay. Um, so I'll just spit those out. But if you'd like to just jump in and um, ask any questions, feel free to, or you can ask them in the chat. Um, I'll ask the question and whoever wants to chime in uh, from the presenters can chime in. So one is how can we help gyms become a more inclusive space? It's a good question. 
Um, speak of my experience so far, um, it was amazing for me because I think this is a very, as Eddie and I have talked in this leading up, this is a very niche group, right? We are a very specific population of the world. Um, I grew up in a city that's 12,000 people big and I went through school as the only individual in a wheelchair. And I kind of stuck out like a sore thumb that entire way. Um, and it's taken me, it took me, I guess, 20, 28 years to uh, be okay with the other secret or the other glaring difference that I had from most people around me as well. Um, when I officially came out back in 2019, um, nothing changed and it was amazing. It was so cool. I felt like my community here at my gym was so accepting. They felt that I wasn't going to change who I was. Um, and if I was, it was only gonna be the better version of myself because now I could 100% be the person that I always have known I was. Um, and they have embraced me through and through with that. Um, I know it's hard this year with COVID and everything that's been going on, but I fully intend to host a outlawed event at our gym, uh, an out event at some point, that'd be fantastic. But I think you'll find that a lot of it is just being able to put yourself in that situation. Um, I'm not saying force yourself to come out if you haven't come out or if you're, you know, even at that point where you're not very comfortable being out yet, um, you know, but just knowing that CrossFit is in a community for me where I feel like I can totally be myself without judgment, um, be it the disability or be it the, my, you know, being homosexual, like it's, it's been nothing that has phased anybody at my gym. Um, I think the biggest thing we can say is that we just have to be welcoming and accepting to anybody. I mean, everybody's here for a purpose and they have a passion towards making that happen. Um, and, you know, that's something in my life that I find passion is, is helping other people find their passions um, and being able to look beyond the limits they have of themselves and see that they are more than they believe or think that they are. And that's such a cool feeling because I had that from my mentors growing up and it's my reciprocal opportunity to give that back. And um, I think the more we can just promote that we are a happy and accepting and welcoming community. Um, we have, I can show it to you here, but we've got a pride sticker on our doors, you know, showing that we're humbly accepting anybody and everybody. So, um, you know, just simple little cues like that make a big difference, especially those that are still unsure of themselves, you know, just actively showing that, you know, this is a place for you um, and reaching out to Outwad, I mean, out Athletics, excuse me, Out Athletics is a, is a great place to start because they are your avenue to towards finding those people and finding the directory of gyms that are accepting and welcoming to anybody. So, um, yeah, I think it's a, a matter of just being willing to use what we've learned today and across our clinics and our, our webinars to, and use that as a tool to say that, you know, it's kind of upon us now to be those leaders and spokespersons to share this wealth of education we've just gained um, and put it to good use. Anyone else? Um, I think I'll just tack on to that, that there, there's also the measure of understanding that if you're if you're not the coach like if you're not in the tom position where you're a part of the leadership of the gym if these people are not someone that you can talk to or someone that you can confer with back and forth then obviously it's going to be a different experience right. you know so you you have to also be able to gauge like what what battles are you going to fight like where where are you going to fit in and what can you do and where can you do it right because there's no no reason to like waste spoons on an uphill battle. If, if you walk in, you have a conversation and they are not accepting of you or your color, your race, your gender, the way that you present yourself, the things that you're asking for, then you can try to talk to whoever else is in leadership, talk to the members, maybe start something going. And if it's not going, then that's when it's kind of also time to move on. So I think there's also like the flip side to this. Like number one, we need spaces to be inclusive, but like also if it's not working out, we need to vote with our money and you, you let them know, I'm not paying to be here anymore. This is why and have to move on. Unfortunately, it's not always like a great outcome and a great experience. So that's kind of why I just want to say that flip side to it um, just to make that clear. And if, if no one else has a question, I mean, answer to that question, there was a question that popped up in the chat that I'd like to answer. So Nick asked more, he'd like to know more about adaptive fitness for athletes with EDS. So I could kind of speak to that one. Um, so the number one thing is 
kind of like what I mentioned earlier, being the expert of your own body. Like if you're not there, then me telling you something to look up for fitness doesn't matter because you're going to get hurt. And not because like you're inept or you're unable to do things, but like if you don't understand, like, okay, if I do pull-ups, my shoulder will dislocate. Like, oh, okay. If I do this amount of volume of squats, then I won't be able to do this the next day. Okay. Um, if I want to do an overhead press day, I can't wash my hair that day. Like if you're not there yet, then you're not going to be ready for the fitness part of it. So make sure that you understand how your body works, your, your imbalances, you know, do you have spasms every time you do crunches? Do your legs flare out? You know, things that are unique to you because even if somebody adapts fitness to work for them, it might not work for you. So keep that in mind. Otherwise, I would say definitely look into the wheel wad if you're into the CrossFit style of workout. Um, otherwise, if you're like, let's say you're into yoga, I'd look up accessible yoga. That's a great foundation collective, a bunch of groups and all that good stuff. And then otherwise I would look into the Disabled Girls Who Lift page and we have a couple of fitness um, organizations that exist. There's adaptive everything really. You know, there's adaptive body, wheelchair bodybuilding federation. There's tons of stuff out there. So if you're just like, I wanna do something, I don't know what, I would say go to our website, which we are updating. So it might be down at some point, but go to our website and look up the different um, <laughs> organizations that are on there. So you at least have some direction to go to, if that makes sense. Cool. Have another question. How can we assure there is more equity for queer disabled folks? I can answer. <laughs> go for it. Um, I, was, I was trying to drum up some thoughts and put them together in my head, but go for it. I, I think like, uh, kind of like Tom mentioned, I do think being visible and having a ton of visibility and working with groups um, that are like-minded is incredibly important. Um, and if there's not a resource out there for you, then freaking make the resource, like work with people who are like want to make the resource and make, make it happen. Um, I know that can be hard, but I think trying like making something like that happen will just increase the visibility um, and then more things like that will will kind of come. Um, and let me see. Um, also, uh, uh, Mary Beth mentioned it, but like, oh, well, also Marcia mentioned it, like people in leadership, like there should be folks like us uh, in leadership um, so that, you know, we can kind of see that, you know, they're obviously just like us. So they'll uh, kind of support us and make sure that we have access to um, certain resources. Um, so I think those kind of two things, like uh, creating things and um, working with other groups that are like-minded um, is important so that it kind of increases the visibility. Um, anyone else wanna chime in on that? Yeah. You did it pretty good oh, there, Eddie. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> um, somebody asked how, or. Can you explain more what the open is and how do you participate? Cool. Alec, you wanna take the lead on that one, bud? Yeah, I can take that, that's fine. So the, the open um, is the CrossFit open. It's the initial stages that would qualify athletes to go on to um, the CrossFit games, which is the annual competition that eventually crowns the fittest on earth for men, women. Uh, there's an age groups for teenagers, there's age groups for masters, which starts at 35, which makes me feel old, but whatever. Um, so um, that's what the open is for competition sake. But what it's, what it really is about is just an opportunity to do a couple workouts. So it'll start in early March and there's uh, typically one workout released a week. Um, you do that one workout in your home gym or in your garage or whatever, and you can submit your score. Um, you can see where you fall among other people that are like you, um, especially for adaptive. Now you can have an actual leaderboard, which is just for adaptive athletes. But like Tom was saying, it's more so about if you're not part of a community or if you are to rekindle with that community and come closer. So typically across the gyms, we'll have like an event when it's not during the pandemic where everybody comes and, you know, a couple athletes do the workout at a time and everybody cheers you on and, you typically like have some drinks after and social and just get together. So it's very much a coming together type of event. Um, 
but so for this year, you may have to do that, you know, kind of being careful with the pandemic and maybe you don't have all the social aspect right there with you, but you will have that support from the whole community. So if you've never done the open or never done CrossFit workouts, you can still try because there's going to be different variations. So there's like the top option, which like Tom will be doing because he'll want to be competing for the top spot. But then there's options to do the workout for just about everybody. So we try to make it inclusive as possible. Um, even the power lifters here, right? Girls, you could you could come do it. You you know, just a little bit of cardio is not going to kill you. You know, you can lift heavy weights and do some cardio. <laughs> um, but it's just really fun. And it, just give it a shot. That's all I can say is, is why not just try it out? You really don't have to put any stress on how you perform per se. And like Tom said too, what most gyms use this as is like a yearly marker. So like you do the open this year and then next year you do the open and you see how you progress. Cause sometimes they do the exact same workouts or very similar workouts and you can kind of see how you're progressing in your fitness over the whole year. So it's less about comparing you versus other people, but it's more about you just having a time to be like, Oh, I'm going to, I'm going to throw down and do some hard workouts and, and enjoy being a part of this bigger community. Um, you register through CrossFit specifically. So CrossFit, if you just type in CrossFit Open, CrossFit Games, you'll see um, a registration page for that. And I, th I think open registration starts on, I want to say like January 6th or 8th this year. And so if you have specific questions about what division you be in, so to make it as fair as possible, um, CrossFit has eight divisions this year. Um, like Tom will be in the seated division. There's two seated divisions for splitting up athletes between essentially if they have hip function or not to make it more equitable and fair. Um, and so you can pick your division um, and then that allows you to compete against other like athletes on the leaderboard at least. Yeah. Cool. Happy to I ask any other questions if there's any follow-ups or anything. Go oh, ahead, Eddie. That actually is a question. Let's see. Oh, that was just a thank you. Um, there, we actually have our own leaderboard also, <laughs> the LGBTQ plus community, which I believe is going to be able to sync also with the um, adaptive um, community as well. But ours is called Out in the Open, and this is like the third year or third or fourth year that we've done it. And we also work closely with um, CrossFit in order to make that inclusive of whatever gender you identify with. So um, that's also something we have. So yeah, look up for all that cool stuff and see that's kind of where we can kind of intersect there. Um, uh, I have a few more questions. I know we only have like five minutes left. Um, what, uh, how has fitness evolved in adaptive athletics? So I think this is sort of just general, whoever wants to chime in. Um, it's been incredible. I, I can speak on behalf of swimming alone and the fact that uh, when I started really getting into the Paralympic organization in 2009, um, you know, the Paralympics had been going on, but within the U.S., it was still kind of in its infancy. Um, and today I can say that many co collegiate swim teams, Division One, Division Two, welcome disabled athletes to swim. Uh, Paralympic athletes, a lot of my teammates swim on scholarships at Division One schools and compete at their conference meets. Um, you know, I think in, and we're seeing now that like in high school sports, um, my local area high school, which again, isn't very big, we've added uh, wheelchair divisions of our track and field meets. And we've added uh, track and field in wheelchair racing to like the state level meets. And we were seeing high school add state level, um, you know, athletics and swimming and um, whatever sport that they're, they're willing to get involved in, you know, um, I see that there's been a lot more acceptance largely because there's just been a larger build of education across the last decade or so. Um, and, you know, as Alec was talking about earlier, the fact that we, Wheelwad and the organization has been adopted in a way to the CrossFit organization this March is a huge step in just creating a larger public awareness of what disabled athletics can look like. Um, you know, I've always been an athletic person myself and much like Marcia and, and Mary Beth were talking about earlier, it's always been one of those things where it's like, okay, well, if I want to participate with my able-bodied friends, I just got to figure it out, like do what I can and make it work. Um, and I think for me, when I found swimming, my coach understood that really well, but he understood it because I had this line of communication with him where I said like, Hey, I can do this or, Hey, I can't do this right now. Like I'm not able to do this. And we learned together how to make those things change and, and really progress really well together. So, um, 
I think education has been the biggest thing. Um, I actually serve on the U.S. Olympic and Paralympic Committee as the U.S. Paralympic Swimming Representative um, for our Athlete Advisory Council, which is a big fancy name for being a messenger between athletes to higher ups. Um, but the level of communication that we're hearing and talking with NCAA officials, like I said, and um, just even with USA Swimming and getting disabled athletes chances to swim at higher level USA Swimming meets, so very similar to how CrossFit's bringing on wheel wad, that's happening in a lot of sports across the area um, where it's most feasible. But again, you know, I see, I see baseball catchers with one hand playing on their varsity team because, you know, what, they want to and they figure it out and they make it happen. So uh, a lot of it's been the ingenuity of the determination of individual athletes. But as an organization, it's really starting to blossom in a way where, you know, it's not like we had a choice about this disability. It was, it was just kind of put upon us at birth or through accident. And we now have to carry that, that torch. Um, and, you know, it's cool that we aren't being, I guess, for lack of a better word, being discredited because of that. So um, it's cool. Yeah. yeah. I just, agree. Uh, go ahead. Go ahead Mary Beth. Okay. I was just going to say, as long as there's been people with varying abilities, um, there's been people working out. So it's not like we, anybody invented adaptive fitness or anything. It's just what I love seeing now are there's people um, like Wheel Wad or uh, Disabled Girls Who Lift and people taking ownership of the space where it's not just a, oh yeah, let's just let them figure things out. But people are actually focusing, doing research and having um, direct focus on how is it best for, let's say Tom to work out because with his cerebral palsy or another athlete with, uh, brachial plexus injury or whatever it may be, um, there's focus on finding the best methods, styles, you know, even down to like rep schemes of what people should be doing. So um, that that's really exciting for us uh, and just the community at large to see that there's actually a focus. And I would highly advise anybody, you know, even if you if you get into fitness and you start working out and you start understanding maybe even specifically what's best for you, like like Tom does, to maybe even start sharing that knowledge. You don't have to be a formal coach, but as soon as you become kind of that focal point and leader in your gym or community, um, try to share that knowledge because that's, that's, it's not necessarily rare, but it's knowledge that can only be uh, gleaned from people that go through that experience. So um, I would love to keep trying to collect all that knowledge from anybody. So any of you that have personal experiences and want to share with with me, with ATA or uh, Disabled Girls Who Lift, I would love to get on a separate Zoom and just hear your experience and what works best or what is not best for you so that we can pass that on to other people. Yeah, I 100% agree that um, it's, grow it's, it's very obviously growing immeasurably in the, in the fitness and sports world just because Yes, we have existed for a very long time. People with disabilities is actually the largest minority group in the world. <laughs> um, and it just sucks because as we grew up and started enjoying sports, it's funny, Tom, that you mentioned um, one-handed baseball players because that's actually the sport that I started in. My, my, you know, my stepdad gave me a right-handed glove to catch take off the right hand of glove um, with my left arm and then throw with that same right arm. Um, and I was the first of all of the kids in elementary and middle school to ever do anything like that. But I think in today's day and age, in the last 10, 15 years, we've just seen it a lot more organized. You see, um, you know, uh, it, I think it was called Disabled Sports USA is one of the first um, that I actually had seen hundreds of sports that they're a part of it's now called move united sport and they have an amazing um they have tons of amazing programs online where they have adaptive basketball archery curling equestrian sports if um you want to ride a you know a horse or cycling goalball golf everything that you need and through ata wheel wad you have a lot more official certifications too as coaches and trainers um, to learn how to um, treat or work people with work with people with disabilities um, depending on what that is and i'm just glad that and of course you know dis various disabilities are visible and invisible same with uh the queer community a lot of us are not out um, so I think it's very important that we are 
100% um, intentional with our spaces and how we are inclusive of all folks, all genders, all disabilities, um, all ages, all sizes. Um, so, you know, back to creating the foundation of how to make gyms more inclusive, I think it's important that um, you start with, you know, member rules for gyms, um, be being very open and intentional about how all are welcome. Um, and obviously the physical foundation as to whether doors are large enough, whether there are spaces for folks to roll around in to get to different um, you know, exercise uh, machines. Um, so I, I just think it's amazing how much it's grown um, and how many more foundations we are becoming aware of that we can share with the young kids that are, you know, very open to joining a barbell sport or playing baseball or playing soccer. I thought that soccer was the only game that I, uh, sport that I could play growing up because you don't have to use your hands. And that's a very sad thing for, <laughs> for a very active child like myself. It's just great that it, there's a lot more exposure um, of athletes like ourselves. So yes, Alec, 26% of people in the US have a disability. Um, I would like to be respectful of everyone's time and just say that we're going to go a little over to 40. So if you'd like to hop off, feel free to. It will be recorded. So don't worry, you won't miss anything. But we'll just um, push it uh, a little bit over to 40. Um, so uh, Mary Beth answered the question about the first step of creating an inclusive gym. Um, there was another question that came in that it says CrossFit is so split between male and female categories and weights that doesn't jive with the LGBTQ plus community. So how do you suggest gyms reconcile that? Um, so the inclusive gym finder has this self report for gyms to fill out to see if they are uh, considered a, um, an inclusive facility. Um, some of those things that we ask in there, you know, like I mentioned is a non-discrimination policy and all that, but some other sort of practices that we're offer, going to be offering on our website are resources that gyms can do to be more inclusive. Some things are um, having training with your coaches around those weights and maybe not calling the barbell a male's barbell and a female's barbell, um, but calling it by its weight since it's not gendered. Um, and also some other things is, you know, with using the Zoom, we put our pronouns. That's something else you can do in specific platforms. Zen Planner, I believe, has that feature. Um, and Wattify, you can go in as simply as we did today and go under the last name and put, put in pronouns as uh, best practice that my gym did. You can also create an inclusive event um, where you bring together the community, uh, folks maybe who are not at the gym who wanna learn more about fitness. So those are some things you can do. Uh, definitely recommend reaching out to us. You can email us, um, info at imout.org and we can provide a ton of um, sort of resources there if it's CrossFit specific. Um, if you have questions about powerlifting, I think Mary Beth and Marcia would be great uh, folks to reach out to. Um, the Out Foundation and Out Athletics is trying to venture out into other areas of sports and fitness. We're not quite there yet, um, but um, if you do have questions specific to CrossFit and how that sort of uh, spaces can be more inclusive with the LGBTQ plus community, definitely reach out to us. Um, so I have a question, I guess each person can kind of answer this. Um, what are some self-care things that you enjoy? Like what are some, I guess, some things that you kind of enjoy as self-care? Whoever wants to go first. Um, I don't mind going first because I, I do have a problem sometimes with the word self-care because people picture it as like, oh, I have to get a mani-pedi or like you don't have to spend money for it to be self-care. Like there's no money requirement. Like to me, self-care means I wake up and I'm like, hmm, I don't have the spoons today. I'm going to lay on the couch. That's self-care. Couldn't agree more with that one. Yep. I feel like I'm on the go all the time and it's gotten to a point now with COVID too, where we were, when we were cooped up, especially like I found myself constantly needing to find something to do to feel like I was productive. Um, and it's gotten to a point now where it's like, I feel like even I come home after a long day of work and I find something I need to keep doing. And it's like, no, you don't just turn it off. And 
I have watched a lot of Netflix this last two weeks and I'm totally okay with it. And it feels great. Like Mayor Marcia said, just laying on the couch and just not feeling like people are judging you for laying on your couch in your own home. Like, come on. No, I mean, that just, yeah. I just love to turn off my brain and just relax. Absolutely. Exactly. Anything that doesn't require any physical or mental strength, I am for on this, especially this holiday weekend. So thank you all for joining us on a holiday weekend. Uh, <laughs> finding things like indoor plants or outdoor gardening, just petting my dog uh, all day, I think is a great definition of self-care. But of course, if there if there's a day where you feel like you need to go out and move or just do breathing drills and exercises, something that's low, um, you know, uh, something that requires very little strength and uh, you know physical work, I will I will do on a on a nice Sunday. Um, for me, it's, uh, I think the number one thing is um, your nutrition, uh, what you put in your bodies. Um, so it's great to work out. And I think you should move every day, even if it's just a little bit, it doesn't need to be a formal workout, just like everybody else is saying, just, you can go for a stroll or do something, but you're putting food in your body every single day. That's the most important part. Um, I, I struggle with it, to be completely honest. I struggle big time with it. Um, but the best thing I found is if you make most of your own food, you're going to be healthier. Because when you make food, unless you're a gourmet chef, you're not going to be adding everything else that, that makes it taste really good. It could be over fattening or too much sugar, um, like restaurants do and takeout food do. So my biggest advice is if you're trying to get back on track or wanna be a little bit healthier, try making most of your meals at home and you know not from a box or can as much as possible. And then that should be a good start. Don't even worry about macros and counting and all this stuff. Just make your own food. Cool. Well, I enjoy sleeping and I enjoy cooking and I enjoy breathing. So <laughs> I love all of those things. Um, well, we are now to the next slide, um, which is kind of the next step. So we are going to be sending over a resource packet um, that I meant, or not a resource packet, but more of a flyer. Uh, that has resources, a ton of resources actually. So definitely check all those out. Um, a lot of those resources were sent over by Disabled Girls Who Lift. So if you have any questions, they have their email there as well that you can reach out to them. Um, we'll also be sending over, you know, the contact information for all the folks you heard from today. So definitely reach out to them if you have any questions. Um, but share this recording with somebody that you think would uh, benefit from it. Um, and let us know what you thought about the, about the event as well. Because we want to have these, we want to have this again next year. We want to offer it uh, two times in 2021. And then hopefully, if it goes really well, we want to offer it quarterly uh, for 2022. Um, and that's kind of it. If you'd like to donate to our cause as well, you can text IML to 44321. Any donation amount is great. Um, but yeah, that's all I got. I want to thank all of the presenters today uh, for coming out. I want to thank all of you for joining us as well. I want to thank the Millbank Foundation who helped fund this uh, first workshop for us. Um, and yeah, so thank you so much. Enjoy the rest of your Sunday and I look forward to connecting again soon. Bye everyone. Thanks everybody. Bye. Thank you.